Hello and welcome to Produced By. Just quickly before we begin, if you enjoy the show, please consider supporting it by joining our Patreon. You can choose from a list of memberships and will receive some exciting rewards. Thank you and back to the episode. Hello, Jenny. Thank you for joining us today and welcome to the show. Can you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Janie and I'm a 3D animator. Um, I've been in the game industry for almost two years, animating um, various game animations. Um, I've been also like, I'm like specialized in Maya and also mm-hmm. I work in Unity as well. So I also graduated in um, 3D animations and games at 2020 uh, with first class honors. And mm-hmm. yeah, I've I was looked for a job during COVID, and that's when I landed um, my first job. So I worked in two uh, studios. Mm. Thank you. So it sounds like you were uh, lucky or fortunate that your first job was already like uh, in the industry. Mm. Really, <laughs> like it was <laughs> like um, especially when it was around COVID. Like it was kind of nerve wracking because it was we were in an unknown period and everything was all relying on computers. Well, I guess it was, I guess it was um, like a blessing in disguise because it made me kind of knuckle down um, alone in the computer. And it's mm-hmm. not as if I was, <laughs> it's not as if I was missing out in anything outside because everything was in poor stage. So yeah, yeah I was very lucky. Mm. <laughs> Cool. And can we start uh, with your background? Can you say where do you come from? As in, like my uh, personal background, as in my ethnicity. I mean, or... are you, were you born in London, or do you come somewhere oh. from outside? I was born and raised in Southeast London, mm-hmm. and my workplace so... is actually uh, based in Liverpool Paul, right now. It's called Drawing Code, so I'm working uh-huh. remotely, and sometimes I visit there to like work oh. with the technology is it required to go there or is it to socialize with others um it's for an animator um it's good to know like we don't i guess i don't really need to always visit visit it unless it's a high priority um Mm -hmm. especially if i need to understand the technology that's happening i can't like say too much but we are using a vr set and working with that and ar so Mm -hmm. from it's kind of complex but at the same complex but at the same time um if you were to experience it you'll understand it but i can't like uh verbally say it and if um i need to understand it and also just fix things or just experience it properly like the 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 experience that we're working on then Mm -hmm. yeah we'll have to go there socializing wise we do have an a christmas fest going on which was around Mm -hmm. uh, december december oh nice yeah but it sounds exciting Mm -hmm. vr stuff Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. what um university did you study was that middlesex i did study in middlesex university um, I studied there for three years and achieved the bachelor's, uh, first mm. class honors, 3D animation games, and I made loads of friends there. And yeah, I learned. Well, I'll say like the projects were mainly for 3D modelers. I was like pretty much the only one that wanted to pursue 3D animation. Um, so it was kind of difficult. How come? How come was it? How come like, I was the only animator? Yeah, yeah. Or people be- weren't interested. I guess so. Like, I think the modules were um, quite more like, um, how, it was, how do I say this? It was more for 3D modelers, I guess. It weren't very 3D animated related. I wasn't able to mm-hmm. play much animation with um, certain rigs. So I didn't get much um, experience in animation there. I did use Anim Dojo, which was... Um, an animation course online so mm-hmm. that was really useful but yeah that was a really good time um, back then mm. and as you mentioned you got first class was it uh, that <laughs> easy or were you such a good student <laughs> um was it easy i say um i never found it 
like challenging in a way that's like well I guess it was challenging I've I think I just enjoyed it more than I did find it hard because mm-hmm. um you know I guess I had like great people there we all kind of wanted to make something cool while keeping each other company it was kind of a mm-hmm. very interesting experience and it's a one of the highlights of my like life as of now because of just the interesting stories that came out of university um we did have like a 24 hour room that everyone used to um sit and work but i was like during first year and it got, kind of left um after two years <laughs> yeah <laughs> and can you say a bit more about the specific projects that you worked on for example what was the final project in the first year in the second year and the final one in the third year wow um i think the first year was more about um generally getting used to different um sets of like the roles so i did double animation but it wasn't much i think we did some diorama diorama is that how you say it diorama environment anime environment 3d models <laughs> so and sorry you said model, d- like d- double animation is like 2d or what does double animation mean just 3d but we did do 2d um uh-huh. just for bouncing ball because i think they wanted what they wanted to try make us understand were squash and stretch and spacing and timing um but that was like a bouncing ball in 2d and mm-hmm. I guess we did a very, very, very short brief of animation in terms of um, like a pose and a, another pose, like how to how Maya works overall on mm-hmm. the first year, and then the second year was mainly to do with oh, how was the second year? I think it was like um, trying to specialize, but we didn't really specialize something along the lines it's been a while <laughs> yeah but yeah. um nice. yeah it's been a while and but you mentioned a few yeah. times a few times uh maya so for people who don't know anything about animation or yeah. vfx what is maya maya is a program that's um specific for well i wouldn't say specific oh, it's mainly for rigging 3d animation 3D modeling is basically a program for 3D work and it's usually used for in the industry um, such as film or uh, games so it's very um, a very known uh, program mm-hmm. so is, mm-hmm. is it like industry standard pretty much I would I mean is blender is coming up because blender is for free so blender is oh, another yeah. kind of like <laughs> Yeah, Blender is another 3D modeling or animation tool, a program, sorry. And because that is for free and Maya isn't, who knows? Maybe people would <laughs> go for Blender more. <laughs> Maybe even prefer so which it. One, it looks great. Which, yeah, which one do you prefer? Do you have a favorite program? <laughs> um, Because I specialize in Maya, I would say Maya. I haven't mm-hmm. used yeah. a Blender, but it does look quite, I'd say it's more inviting looking. <laughs> mm-hmm. it yeah, looks a yeah, little yeah. more like modernized and because it's for free that is a big bonus okay. mm-hmm. yeah yep and sorry i interrupted you before uh so what i think you are uh, talking about the projects at the university mm-hmm. um so yeah i don't i can't remember much about the first two years but i do remember specializing trying to um work in like improve my animation um during the last year and that's when i was trying to create my first reel uh, so for um when you are trying to apply for a job outside in the productions you need a reel to show your um skills so but a reel is basically a videos like shots of your animation skills and mm-hmm. i was trying to create as many um or just practice especially practice because as i mentioned the projects for the first two years weren't very particular in animation so i had to make sure that i had to relearn um learn it properly through anim <laughs> dojo which is an animation course and kind of mm-hmm. dedicate that 
final year, I would say mainly the last few months of that year, just completely in that zone. And I remember like we were, because we, it was COVID, I graduated like later. So I graduated around September and I just kept going. I just mm-hmm. kept going. And I um, I was learning how to do post polls. Uh, that's basically, it is, it is kind of self-explanatory. It's just basically posing a character a character rig in one pose to the other and then adding a breakdown which is a breakdown is basically mm-hmm. the transitional pose from one another so i was learning different sets of um like different i want to say different workflows but i was learning the terminology and learning the principles and trying to apply it the first time well for the first time during that um during that period mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. And what is what is rig? Can you explain rig? rig? Sure. So a rig is basically if you see like um, for instance, for instance, um, Pixar or any kind of movie or maybe even games or whatever, the props, the three D props, the assets, even um, characters. A rig is basically um, the general terminology for controls of the character slash props so it's a puppet you Mm -hmm. it always starts off as if it was a character it will start off as a t pose like that (laughs) and (laughs) it's basically think about like a just a general puppet like the string puppet Mm -hmm, and -hmm. it's controls like this (laughs) yeah (laughs) and controls um you can control each limbs and body that's a rig that's like i wouldn't say yeah that's a rig if you can if you control mm-hmm. the 3d asset slash 3d asset slash uh, characters slash props or whatever that's yeah. a rig okay cool and with uh in your final re- reel in the third year what were maybe some you know assets that you created or some specifics about the, the real so that we can get an idea of what you created or what were your skills like oh okay so i didn't really create the um assets um when you animate you tend to just focus on the movement and <laughs> your thinking process of it so when i was thinking about what i would add in my uh, uh reel it would be what can I like show like what's my I wanted to show as much as I possibly can in terms of um diversity so for example mm-hmm. I wanted to show lip sync I wanted to show um that I understood body mechanics <laughs> I wanted to show that I, I wanted to show that I can story tell um that's what I was mainly trying to show when I was creating a, a each shot I was trying to see how I can make it diversity or diverse is it diverse Di- a diverse Di- i'm trying to make it is it that word? diverse what is it i don't know diverse <laughs> <laughs> i think it i think that's probably adjective or is it a verb no clue basically a diversity of shots to like um impress a a certain company back then mm-hmm. i was actually aiming towards uh movies or like tv so but I ended up in games. So yeah, that's what happened. It was, it was a, um, I mean, I guess that's, that's what you get from a 3D animation and games degree. But mm-hmm. then that was, so it was unexpected, but it was really cool. Yeah. yeah. And before we continue, what, uh, why were you actually interested in this kind of career? Were you always into animation or 3D or effects? Um, I got into animation when <laughs> I don't know if anyone knows this, but you know, mini clip if, is a it is basically um an online gaming um place. So I want to say that actually, it's basically a website full of mini games, and one of the mm-hmm. mini games had a two D animation uh tool that, and after that, you basically create frame a frame by frame drawing so that you create a 2d animation 
Mm-hmm. And I think that was like, oh, that's, that, that I made a character move. My first <laughs> animation <laughs> I made in that, or 2D animation, was a stick man farting. And I thought I was so cool. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so was it when when you were a child or was it just briefly before university or how long ago did you get interested in it? Well, specifically 3D animation. I never knew that really existed. I obviously loved like Pixar, like Toy Story, Monsters Inc, Finding Nemo. Mm-hmm. I really loved those. Um and I never knew 3D animation until I started trying to specialize in a creative subject and I saw that 3D animation existed um Mm -hmm. and I remember applying towards I remember applying at Middlesex University, uh, Greenwich University, um, Westminster, Escape Studios and Ravensbourne and one of the one of them was 2D animation but I was kind of leaning more towards 3d because my brother asked me do you want to create this kind of animation which is which he pointed at a <laughs> frozen <laughs> animation or do you want to do 2d which 2d and he didn't point at anything but just i think he showed me some i can't remember what he showed me but i mm-hmm. i just thought about like i just want to do 3d because i felt like i feel like the workflow for 2d oh I think it's a strenuous, uh, like, workflow, <laughs> and I completely yeah. appreciate it. And also, <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate their efforts and quality mm-hmm. that comes out of it. But my gosh, I don't think I can do it. Or maybe I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. So um, when you decided to uh, for your first job, how did you actually start looking for a job uh, or what was the process like? So, as I mentioned, it was like COVID. So I didn't know what that like meant in the, um, in the, like when I was applying, but that kind of, it all kind of suggested that there were less jobs around. That's what everyone kind of um, talked about. Like, oh, there's less jobs around because of COVID. We don't need mm-hmm. people, I guess. Um, so I went down to kick a Kickstarter scheme. So that was like a, a government, um, government, what is it? How do I explain it? A a campaign for those who find it, Mm -hmm. found it difficult. Um, it's very specific for COVID times, um, to like, it helped a government campaign to help you find a job. And fortunately, um, when I sent my CVs and um, real to them, they were able to find a studio that was looking for someone who is starting a new job. And it turned out to be me. Oh, nice. <laughs> and it was yeah. related in the, in the field that you wanted to do. Yeah. I mean, I was Oops. definitely nervous to not um, get it. But... Yeah. And was uh, the, I guess the industry was impacted by COVID a lot as well, right? Or do you know how was it since, you know, people or artists can still work, could still work from home? Although I guess back then people didn't really work from home. So was it very impacted or not that much? In my um, first, like when I went into the studio, I see- I assume that not many people will come in. I think that's what impacted um, the game. Well, get, not always the game industry, but that's what impacted like the camp, uh, the studio that I went in. Um, they allowed more remote w- working and or mm-hmm. hybrid working. Um, so I, I guess that um, was the impact, and I guess that also influenced. Um, the closeness, I guess, not want to say closeness, because we were all kind of, it was a very small studio, so people knew each other. Um, but I'll say that impacted the remote and hybrid. I, I don't think it was like that before. I think everyone was working inside the office. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
so when when you started uh, were you also going to the office or remote or hybrid um, i was hybrid because i like the balance of um working at home and working in the office because then you get to see people and you and it was my first job so i felt like i wanted to like yeah. understand people i always enjoy people's um i like watching people's work i remember a 3d artist was working beside me and i was just wowed at his um 3d skills <laughs> and i think it just helps uh-huh. like it's just more fun it's just more it also helps like distinguish like where is my relaxing time and also where is my working time Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And uh, how did you then enjoy your first job? Did it meet your expectations? I never had any expectations. I'd say I learned what I needed to learn. I came with an open mind and it had its it was a very high demanding studio for for a mobile game. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it it requested a lot. I remember we had to create a game every month and because we were so highly pressured, my onboarding stage wasn't smooth because it we were just I was just put in the deep end straight away. Like to give more context, um <laughs> The person asked me like my estimations before like what like how long I would take an animation before I even downloaded Maya before I downloaded Unity. So it was highly pressured, but it was a very mm-hmm. big learning experience and it did make me grow as an animator and as a person. Mm. Yeah. And you said they were making a new application each month. A new game. Oh, new game. Yeah, sorry. That yeah. sounds very fast. Yeah. So in in. So a... there weren't. <laughs> no. Yeah. Sorry. Sure. No, no, no. I was just gonna say, what can you give just example? What kind of um, application is it? Because to me, it sounds very quick. So I cannot imagine how complex the application is or what kind of application it would be in such a short span of time mm-hmm. well i remember as soon as we get briefed we had to just go 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 <laughs> um i remember there were there weren't much uh how do i plan how do i say this the game designers will um will present a documents or powerpoints of what they um envision as a game as a whole and then the producer will then break it down to each of our teams so there will be a game developer team and a 3d team and it will mainly be uh, between those two teams i believe i wouldn't say they broke it down broke down for marketing i don't remember but when they do that they basically from there it's like they create all the small tasks that's necessary to make the game function and an example for my one will be uh animates the monster eating or animate the monster jumping into the bath so it'll be very mm-hmm. vague but also open to interpretation which is great for me because then i get to creatively input um a an action um mm-hmm. but it's also too vague because then there'll be conflict <laughs> in ideas <laughs> but um yeah 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 we managed we managed <laughs> so there was so a how much of... no i'm sorry didn't want to interrupt no, no. that's okay i was just gonna say how much creativity did you have or was it like you didn't really know tried something to see if it's too much or if it's you know how did you know how much creativity you can use oh um a part of me knew they it was a slow understanding that they may not knew like they didn't know specifically what they wanted but at the same time <laughs> knew what they wanted <laughs> 
So I had to present something <laughs> first and then they will give feedback on what they want. It was a very um, long-winded process, but, um, you know, I had to ask questions beforehand. And one thing I would have, like, changed differently is to be confident that I didn't know what they wanted. <laughs> so then I would have, like, mm -hmm. asked more questions on what they would like, specifically. But, again, um, we managed and they fit into the game um like well the character's personality and therefore part of the game so yeah <laughs> that's the process <laughs> so how was how was the game in the end or some games you worked on um did it work in the end did you try to play it by yourself how was it um they all worked they, unfortunately they weren't released because the game studio uh closed down before it was able to go out oh, there that is shame. however i know but i did like fortunately recorded the gameplay before so that i was able to put it in a reel and fortunately yeah. i focused on the high priority animations and they were all rushed like it was i didn't have like time to like really um I just had to go with the go-go mind, like just go for it. Um, quite little planning and just, it is it is like that. Like you have to make sure that you get, it was a very big balance of quality and quantity. And I was really trying to push a lot of, um, mm -hmm. a lot, as many as I can. And especially trying to just understand the time and quality they wanted. So that's the, that's the balance that I had to look for <laughs> when I was trying to yeah make it work in the game. It sounds like a quite tough uh, first job. I would be excited to <laughs> join uh, my career I dreamed about, and then the first job. I don't know. It <laughs> sounds a bit scary for someone just entering the industry. Was it the same for you? No, for me it wasn't. I actually. Um, I was lucky because I joined as a part of this special scheme where, um, there are more people that joined at the same time. So, and oh, nice. I think they managed really well. It was, I think I was really lucky. Yeah. Um, wow. I can, I cannot complain. There was a great group of people. They prepared everything really well and yeah, it was great. Um, I think I was probably mm. lucky and fortunate, yeah. yeah and I was awesome. gonna ask you if, if if it's um if you can say publicly what was the reason that the company closed down, or if you cannot say it publicly, don't don't say it. Mm, I think it's I think I can say, but because I feel like um it's not my company it's i don't feel very com like i don't think i can like i wouldn't choose to say like publicly like out loud i think it's i think it's a uh, someone else's voice rather than an animator's that's just like me <laughs> yeah of course of course no worries mm -hmm. um so then how did you find your next job or um how did you start looking for the next one after after the first one well, the first um the first job was um I learned a lot like despite like you know the little like it was highly like demanding um so it made it the like finding a new job um like oh I did the hard part like wonder what studio I can go for like um I knew that it wasn't <laughs> it, I was trying to like have hope in the big ones but um I ended up um finding drawing code and. Oh, I've, I've lost the question. What is the question again? It, it was, uh, how did you then start looking for the next one or what were your uh, first yeah. steps mm -hmm. after um, after what happened with the first one? Okay, sorry. I completely like, when I was um, talking, I was like, oh, what was I, where was I um, <laughs> going for this again? Um, no, no worry. So I collected notes, okay. Um, I collected the animations from um the, the f like the first um studio because those were my current animation. Uh, because the 
because it was so highly demanded and I wasn't able to like have time to create my personal animations so I had to create a reel from that collect all the animation shots such as well slash gameplay and put it into a reel and I had to ask if I can show it publicly or privately because it depends um on the it wasn't owned by me it was owned by the company um Mm -hmm. and so I I think I I believe I created a reel from there and when I first first applied to jobs it would be a private reel when it was announced um announced announced uh it was closing down I was I was able to ask if I can show it publicly and I basically try to get as many people um looking at it and see if anyone is interested in hiring me and I applied to many different um into different websites and mainly LinkedIn and that's when I landed um drawing code I found I found it in the little um <laughs> the little list of what like who is finding a 3d animator applied to that mm-hmm. and they hired me there <laughs> mm, nice yeah i i remember i tried to look for a job on linkedin as well and it it's great to use it but i got a bit scared when i saw that it shows how many people applied as well so i saw the number Aww. it was very high i was like yeah. wow this is <laughs> this is impossible <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I did refresh. I was like at one point quite well. I would say like during the first year, I was quite crazy, like tr- like refreshing the LinkedIn page like constantly, and it wasn't great because also <laughs> you need some space on the phone. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I do understand like not be like high pressuring because like, it's like you guys applied before me. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, but keep that, keep asking. And did you? you too. <laughs> yeah, and did you face? quite a few rejections or how how was it for you um you know because i guess the reality is that um you need to persevere and keep applying to be lucky in the end so how was it for you lots of rejections i think everyone like faces lots of rejection (laughs) honestly you Mm -hmm. you just have to keep going because at the end of the day like um the a rejection is like a step as long as you've applied it gives you the confidence that you are making the steps to get a job and if it, the re- the rejection shouldn't stop you from um keep on applying because again it's just a, it's just an indicator that it's just not for you at that time it's just it is it is time and it is how many you apply so those are like mm-hmm. two ingredients time and how many you apply <laughs> yeah and if one rejection rejection it may mean that the next job may be even a better one than the one that they uh, rejected so you never know that's yeah. correct yeah if you want to boost your creative career check out our skillshare class which was inspired by the podcast it's called the 10 tips on how to succeed in your creative career and you can find out more in the show notes. Also, make sure to subscribe to our weekly newsletter called Creative Spotlight to stay up to date with the show and much more. Thanks. And the second job is... Yeah, yeah. and the second job is your current one, right? Yes. I worked I worked freelance, I worked as a freelancer beforehand. I, I forgot to kind of mention that, but I have worked that with that too. Well, worked in that little like freelancing but that was like a very small time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay um so why didn't you continue as a freelancer was it just as something temporary or you didn't enjoy freelancing um i when i dabbled into freelancing i i just want mainly just felt like i wanted a full time but only mainly because i think it gives you a set time of work you get 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and that's your everyday regime whereas freelancing you're you can have the tendency to work, overwork or um mm-hmm. you need to t- like time manage and i feel like 
I don't want to be at risk of overdoing it because I think that is not what I want to experience. I think that was just a personal choice. Beyonce is a personal mm-hmm. choice. If it's for you. Go for it. If it's not, find a full time or part time or what suits you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Um, can you then tell us more about your current job? Uh, what maybe what is specifically you do there? If it's different, in what way is it different from the previous job? It's quite similar. I have, I was rigging the character. I did rig the character. I still animate um, little animations for the game to work. So a game design will have a set of animations for its work. For example, um, the first anim, the fir- the first studio's game was about monsters eating pizza. So obviously you need an animation having a monster eating pizza. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> the specifications for um, for the game to function, like animate for the game to function, is still the same. Um, priorities. Um, still have to be established you need a high priority low priority um so that you know what goes you need to animate first and then work your way through and asking for feedback is the same so you have to implement feedback if the, if it doesn't work towards um if it just needs improvement here and there um in accordance to the, the game designer or your art director and the difference is i'd say Hmm. I will say that. <laughs> let me say. Differences, differences. Characteristics. Is, uh, <laughs> is it is it more chilled now, or more organized, or less stressed? I am the only animator, um, and I have been oh, an, oh, the really? alone animator for a while. Yeah, I've been um. My first job, I did have a um, a second animator, but there was a moment, like three months in, I was alone for about mm-hmm. a month or two, I don't know, until another animator came. So I did have an extra animator temporarily in the first studio, whereas here I have, more, um, I am the only animator. And I'd say I have, Um, a lot more communication with the art director um, in this mm-hmm. industry, in this um, uh, studio. And it's not because, like, I didn't like my last art director. <laughs> no, not none of that. I think that studio was more of a go, go, go. Here is more um, the art director that I have right now. Um, specifically, like, make sure that we don't go through crunch time, and make sure that um everyone works at their at a pace where things work but also um not feeling highly you know feeling highly pressured and make sure that um the quality is there wait what did i say <laughs> but um no no yeah it, it makes I, sense uh to f- foster a nice working environment um not to stress mm. out, not to do overtime and I guess enjoy more working in general. So what mm-hmm. um the pipeline what is your yep. uh pipeline is different? Slightly, slightly. Um before I would um because I joined in slightly later in this um company, I guess they um I guess they've already worked on. The, they haven't worked. I get, I don't really know actually. I, I I will say they haven't worked out how to implement the animations just yet. I had more of a go 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 plan of how to set up the animations in the previous, but that's only because it was so like quick and repetitive. At the same time, we knew what the new uh, Unity project will look like because we it's basically the same. Uh, format of the animation controller so yeah mm-hmm. but here oh i, yeah, I don't yeah. i currently um um we are right now currently working that out and uh since you joined uh how many projects do you worked on or is it just the only one 
Um, I've worked on another animation, um, sorry, another project. Um, so again, another difference is probably that we've um, created a game every month, but this game that we're working on now is for, it's been on for a year, I believe. It's going to like be released soon. Uh, so wait for that. <laughs> um <laughs> but i have worked on a different um project i have worked on i worked on another project that had to impress clients <laughs> but i can't say too much okay okay yeah. yeah i was i was wondering if there is anything uh, public that you can share but i guess there isn't not at the moment it will be soon though okay we'll be soon we will be excited for the new one that is coming and we'll check it out when it's out. Thank you. And thank you for like this cool uh, podcast. <laughs> you know that this guy, Tom, has literally like tried to get the best quality um, video here. So <laughs> he researched it. We got so many episodes. Please just check them out. <laughs> this is very cool. I, I really respect <laughs> that you're starting this podcast. <laughs> Don't think anyone has no, said that, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> just try and we'll see how it goes. But uh, no big expectations. It's just for fun and uh, to inspire others. Um, it's good. So, uh, At least you've done. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Um, what can you share some advice? Uh, whether it comes from your time at university or looking for a job or your work experience? Mm, depends. Which one do you, uh, which specific parts of my, uh, like, which uh, specific parts of my animation stages would you like to um, get a advice from? Like, from, because um, uh, then I have... I mean, we can... <laughs> Yeah, uh, if we if we can start, if you can, um, as a successful student who uh, graduated with uh, first class, what oh, yeah. uh, advice would you give to someone who wants to go to university if it's worth it, or how to mm -hmm. you know maximize their time there, or something? What would you say to younger yourself? Anything that comes to your mind? Oh, <laughs> sure. Okay, so someone who is looking for a university i would say that's um specifically for animation or maybe is trying to explore the 3d pipeline um like different roles because there's so many roles in the 3d um, world such as rigging 3d modeling 3d animations whatever and the first thing i would do objectively is look at the portfolio of the university and specifications of each modules so that you understand the quality and portfolio that you're going to make because at the end of the day when you start trying to apply to jobs outside online even you are basically showing your artistic skills from that rather than a cv in a mm -hmm. academic world, like if you was to be applying for um, a receptionist <laughs> or maybe an accountant even, <laughs> something that's not from the creative industry, you are specializing in creating the best representation of your skills in that portfolio. Hopefully that makes sense. Yep, yeah, yeah, sure. And when it comes to uh, working as a either as an artist or in creative industries, uh, some career advice. Career advice when you start off or is looking for a job. You can say both. Okay, so when you're looking for a job, I'd say there is this word like networking. <laughs> which is really, <laughs> it, it can be kind of a bizarre, um, it can be a bizarre perspective, but um, I would, I don't, 
my definition of networking is basically just getting to know people. That's all it is. It's not like getting to mm-hmm. know people in the industry and just appreciating how they got into it. Um, people tend to like may well may feel like that is the only way. Like that that I need to only know this person just to get a job, and I think that's the worst way of approaching anyone because it can give some form of desperation and it's kind of fake. And I don't think anyone would like, yeah, if yeah, I were yeah. to talk to you, exactly. If anyone were to talk to like one and feel like, Hey, I just need to talk to you just because I get a job. I might get a job. That's the wrong approach. <laughs> <laughs> you will. Uh, unlikely. Yeah, I, I can agree. <laughs> You'll get the aura. <laughs> the aura is um, not, you do might want to back away <laughs> i would say definitely be authentic and give your best mm-hmm. first impression if you were to if you were to go into networking industries um sorry not where network industries we're networking uh meetups because sometimes the creative mm-hmm. um there's sometimes a little meetups that people do so that people meet new people and get stories and like this podcast understand like how to get um, into the industry (laughs) you basically learn and I feel like appreciating learning how people got into the industry just builds up your confidence because you will have your own story Mm -hmm. soon um and someone sharing their story can you can find like relatability to that and when you find relatability, that will give you the confidence to continue applying and work through the rejections. And when mm-hmm. I talk yeah, about yeah. giving your first impression, again, that's just basically knowing what you know and what you don't know. I think you're not obviously going to come across as like, when I say, <laughs> when you give your first impression, you're not going to see everyone in the network industry as like your friends, like, hey, I vomited already <laughs> I vomited like two days ago you're not gonna like embarrass yourself like that <laughs> I think everyone knows maybe I, mean, I hope I don't need to explain how to give a first, great first impression but you're not gonna come across as I guess come across as yourself but not not weird as hell not too not overly friendly mm-hmm. just as yet just read the environment and get to understand people mm-hmm. That's how I would say. And then perhaps, um, because of networking, perhaps they will, like I said, give you confidence, but then they might like give you a word of advice and they might have, maybe, maybe they'll have a job, like a job openings here and there. Not guaranteed that you're going to get a job, but like I said, first impression and be authentic. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a great tip. I can only agree. I heard it so many times about networking. Um, from my own experience, mm. I can only agree with that. So what you said, it's a great and spot on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I met a cool person like you. Well, that's it... how I how I'm networking. <laughs> I'm network. <laughs> Glad I didn't. Yeah, yeah. You likewise. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. Uh, where do you see yourself in the future? What are your plans? Uh, when it's either um, dream position, dream project, dream company, um, where do you see yourself? I think first and utmost, I see myself in a team, in an animation team. I've been in an I've been an animator. <laughs> it sounds like a vague answer, but. I've been the only animator for a while now. <laughs> only very, I know very limited people that's, that does animation. And I think it'll be great to like bounce off. I think it's good to, to meet, um, like work with people that has similar interest in you because then you ha- are able to subconsciously bounce ideas and skill sets that's related to your work. Um, mm-hmm. And... I will then, I would love to see, because I was working in, I remember, how do I say this? <laughs> I was working <laughs> towards a feature film, but like, I would love to be in a feature film. 
But um, if life takes me to and it's continuously games, like I think like it would be a stylized animation for sure. I have yet to work out where I specifically want to be in simply because of how my career has like developed. I think as mm-hmm. of now, I don't want to be too mechanical. I just want to like develop my animation skill set and see what I enjoy. And I definitely enjoy um, storytelling, star- story, um, stylized animated dynamic movements even. And I think I think I will go, um, when I have developed that, like, or developed, like, how do I say this? Create a reel for it. I'll see where I'll go from there. And I think I'm quite open-minded on where it will, because I'm sure my reel will lead me to the correct place in a correct mm-hmm. um, project. When yeah, I see it, I know it. <laughs> and I wonder, I mean, fingers crossed, we'll see in a, in a few years uh, when we when your name is in credits of some animation <laughs> uh, feature film. <laughs> it's so cool. I was just uh, yeah. curious, Curious, do you know um, how competitive is it if you compare like working as animator, let's say in games versus in uh, films? Is one maybe more competitive than the other or is it similar? Um, Quite unsure. I would say um, I can only just observe. And from what I've gathered from observation, Hmm. I will say I can't tell with that one. Like I would say, like mm. I think generally speaking, the animation uh, industry is competitive as well as supportive. So I think it only depends on your reel. If your reel is like, say, for instance, so League of Legends themed. I think you'll be beaten <laughs> by someone who is <laughs> with a kid's animation, perhaps. <laughs> so I think it's mm-hmm. very, very, I I can't tell generally. I think it just, I think everyone has um, their own like skill sets and specific speciality to give in a company. And I think if you just keep believing yourself there, you can either see the competition as really hard or, you're just confident in it you can just do it kind of thing does that make sense mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah that's understandable and is your reel uh publicly available yes it is <laughs> it was um form from it was formed by the my last studio so those were the last animations i um are able to show publicly i have yet to gain well, I have worked on personal projects, but um, I need to like develop them a lot more further to, uh, for it to be in a row. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. So we can share the link. Uh, we'll can edit to show notes <laughs> so that uh, people can have a look. Sure. <laughs> uh, and so if, if you were to work on a, a feature animation, what would be maybe your dream project or what's like your favorite animated films that you would want to work on <laughs> maybe feel like a kid <laughs> like because i feel like this is my little <laughs> kitty size like oh my god i would obviously love to be like Pixar. <laughs> i would love to be in um um little uh i think pixar because there's always been i think if i had to dream big pixar would be the not ultimate um feature film in place mm-hmm. only because sorry dreamworks i would love to be dreamworks too why not <laughs> i don't i've got nothing against dreamworks it's just <laughs> i think I, when i was younger i'd mix the brands anyway <laughs> but i would say dreamworks um <laughs> pixar those big ones i can dream i'll i'll dream them <laughs> mm-hmm. oh sony oh my god I, sony I mean... has created a really cool final oh. so i can't eliminate them they whichever got great styles or like just yeah great mm-hmm. styles and storytelling well oh, i think i might i obviously would love to be in that <laughs> yeah i i can only agree mm-hmm. and uh um uh, so what what some specific specific films from either um pixar or um 
DreamWorks. I know you mentioned before um, Toy Story or Finding Nemo. So are there any <laughs> maybe newer ones or some other yeah. that uh, you enjoyed? I definitely, I mean, I think everyone enjoyed it. It was, this isn't from DreamWorks or um, uh, Disney. It was Spider-Man verse. Um, was it again? Is it Spider-Man? No, Spider-Man outside. Spider-Man versus <laughs> is the is the animated Spider-Man. I can't. I can't believe I cannot remember. Oh, the the into Spider-Verse and across Spider-Verse. Yes, yes. I cannot believe I forgot the name that okay. one. Freaking awesome. <laughs> he does not like the style there. It was mainly the style there is absolutely pretty. Mm, yeah, mm. I, I definitely agree. It was it was beautiful. Uh, excited for mm. the next one. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, when it comes, oh, arcane about League of Legends, right? Yeah, there are so many cool animations out there. I think I just need to keep like looking. I know. <laughs> and one that I would I would mention is uh, there was a recently animated feature film, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It the animation was similar to Spider Man. It was also so beautiful and how uh how much do you share your work on linkedin if um, people want to want some inspiration or you can uh, be inspiration for them can they follow you oh i wish it was often like i really wish like i wouldn't when i post something if i was to i would 100% love it when people like give me feedback only because like I mentioned I'm the only animator and everyone's mm -hmm. there to I would say like whenever I am ready to like show a personal work I think I'll send it there but it's not as regular I haven't like added mm -hmm. um time to personal study as of now I have quite a very nice um it's a very nice balance of work and and free time because I go climbing when I um finish work oh, nice. sometimes like that's like a great form of exercise it's a way to just zone out and get away from the screen <laughs> so as of now I'm trying to work out yeah, time, yeah, the agree. time to you know work personal things and send it out there yeah but uh share something on LinkedIn I can try to reshare it uh, if people Oh. <laughs> either to provide feedback or you know to follow you or for some inspiration um definitely go for it thank you you too this podcast everyone go for the tom's <laughs> podcast <laughs> thank you it's re I will have really just, like uh, wait, wait, uh, no. remember that you actually you thank did this yourself thank <laughs> you i will have just uh last few qu questions since uh we are sure. over an hour so uh we spoke about linkedin but where can people follow you or uh where they can see your work um instagram dang it art or mainly linkedin um Janie dang so yeah those two mm -hmm. it's just... yeah cool Do we'll, need to post um, more? edit to <laughs> i i will add everything to the show notes so people can have a look and Thank then you. is there a any question or something I forgot to question I should have asked or something um, you want to share that, uh, you know, uh, is worth sharing? Um, how did you start off this podcast and how did you, <laughs> it's towards you? Because I think it's very cool that you started this, um, like people get scared to start something like this. So go take it. <laughs> Take it, take it away. <laughs> Unless you have an episode for that, I was... we'll definitely there. <laughs> no, I, I didn't have, but uh, I'm not gonna lie, I was scared as well. I was like, uh, mm -hmm. how do I start? You know, it's not just uh, grab grab microphone and start speaking with someone. You wanna you wanna do mm -hmm. some research and know how to do that. So yeah, I did a lot of research. Obviously, it was stepping out of my comfort zone, so didn't uh, didn't know if I should do that then 
Uh, I guess I was maybe even afraid of what people are going to think about, you know, a guy just sharing <laughs> why should people listen to him and stuff like that. So, yeah, it, it wasn't easy, but I enjoy uh, speaking with people, uh, in, inspiring people f- such as with you now. I find out something new. It's pretty cool what you do, and it's also motivating for me. So, it's definitely don't regret that I started. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> that is something that I, <laughs> I can take from here too. You honestly, that, that starting something like this is um, not easy. So <laughs> good job on patting the back on you. Thank story. you. I, I appreciate it when I uh, hear, you know, supportive for some positive words like this. And then I would have uh, one last question. It's a it's mm-hmm. a bit deeper one that I got inspired from yeah. some other podcasts. So if you had attention of everyone and you could share, uh, I don't know, either some kind of wisdom or just to say something to people and they would hear it, what would you tell them? Oh, the definition of confidence. Um, I stumbled across this book of confidence and I... I think it was called Six Pillars of Confidence or Seven Pillars of Confidence. I cannot remember. It was just about confidence. <laughs> and it <laughs> was, confidence is made up of, I'm paraphrasing, by the way. Confidence is made of two components, self-trust and self-respect. So when you feel like you're lacking confidence, mm-hmm. you have to ask yourself, which component are you lacking? Are you lacking um, self-trust in your decisions? or are you just being crappy and mean about yourself? If one is mm-hmm. unleveling or lacking, then you're lacking the overall confidence. So I think mm-hmm. when it's so how it's applicable is just generally when you're not feeling um confident, those are the, basically the questions you like you have to just um um ask yourself, like which one is it? And it could be both. Yeah, that, that's that sounds great. I will it. do. <laughs> <laughs> I will do more research on it, and I'm glad I asked this question. It's the first time I actually <laughs> thought about it, so it's it's a yeah? good answer. Yeah, it helps me a lot. Like because you know everyone do says you, be more yeah. confident, but what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and it's not like you know just it's not like be more confident and suddenly you will be more confident like nothing. It's not that easy. <laughs> no, of course, mm. no, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I think uh, we can finish it then for today. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure to meet you, to speak with you and yeah. to find out something new. As I said, um, I'm curious So. I didn't know much about animation and also it's inspiring to hear someone who's, you know, pursuing your dream career. So I just wish you good luck and uh, thank you. And I will stay in touch with, with this. Thank you. And thank you for this cool podcast and opportunity. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And I will stay in touch. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please leave us a five-star review on your favorite podcast app, get in touch to provide your feedback, or share any ideas for future guests. Thank you, and see you soon.